This is the continuing story of Peyton Blake. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Ed Nelson as Michael Rodney. Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie. Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington. Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson. Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson. Christopher Conley as Norman Harrington. Sudden and tragic death of Ann Howard has been felt throughout Peyton Place and has begun to affect the lives of all who knew her. The aftershock has been strongly felt in the home of Martin Peyton. His grandson, Rodney Harrington, has left his house in anger, and he must manipulate Rodney to learn the truth about Ann's death. The police have begun a full-scale investigation. Many are to be questioned. Some will have answers, some will not. Ann Howard's death has sharply changed the lives of many people in Peyton Place, and it will continue to do so. Miss Weber? Yes? I'm Sergeant Goddard. I know. Uh, do you know where he is? Now, it's just routine, Mrs. Weber. I, I have a few questions I'd like to ask him. He's in the back. Lee Weber? That's right. I'm Sergeant Goddard. Hello, Christopher. Sergeant Goddard? I'm sorry to bother you, Lee. I have a few questions to ask you, if you have time. I've got nothing but time. What do you want to know? Well, I'd rather we talk down at the station, if that's all right with you. Mind telling me what it's all about? I'm investigating the death of Ann Howard. What do you want to talk to me for? Well, we're talking to everybody that knew her, and you did. In a way. Well, why don't you come down and talk to us about it? Sure, why not? Lee. Lee, you don't have to answer any questions without counsel. Anything you say can be held against you. Maybe Chris should go with you. Why, to hold my hand? I just want you to be aware of your rights. Now, you can have an attorney present if you want one. Look, Sarge, I think you're making a big thing out of nothing. Now, if you want to talk to me, let's go. Lee. Look, there's no sense in you tagging along, Chris. I know, I just think. You just think. I know what you think. But I'm telling you, forget it. Well, take this with you, then. This is the lawyer that went in with me when I talked to Sergeant Goddard. Thanks. See you later, Christopher. Mr. Weber? Lee. Will you be back for lunch? I'll be back. Sandy? Are we alone? Yes. May I ask you something? Well, yeah, sure. Where was Lee? Where was Lee when Ann died? He told you he was at home. I know what he told me. I'm interested in what you tell me right now. Chris. I'm not the police and I'm not Dr. Rossi. I'm Lee's brother and I want to know the truth. Well? The truth is, he was with me. He came home, and we uh, turned the music on, had a couple of drinks, and uh, started to relax, and then Dr. Rossi burst in on us. It's very well rehearsed, Sandy, but you can say that a wife doesn't have to testify against her husband anyway. And I don't believe one word of it. Chris, please. I feel sorry for you really don't owe him that much. I'm his wife. I know. I'm his brother. You're scared and I'm scared. But you don't have to lie to me. I always thought there was something special with us. Now all of a sudden you can't even trust me with the truth. 
Mary, please. It's all right. Maybe you're right not to. I trusted Allison, and look what happened. Wake you up. That's all right. That bed's kind of lumpy, huh? Oh, it's fine. Good morning, Rita. Morning, Rod. The scrambled eggs okay? Oh, yes, I'm being nice. I better clean this up, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you better. Here, read this. Wife. I'll get it. I'll get it. Yes, for the time being. And then? And then I'll get a place of my own. Why all this nonsense? I left you a note. I expected more than a petulant insult. He allegedly scrawled in a scrap of paper. I don't think you really want to hear, Grandfather. I want to hear why you left my house like a worthless vagrant. I thought you had better breeding than that. If you were leaving, you might at least have had the dignity to tell me to my face. Dignity? Were you concerned about my dignity when you let Stephen Cord think I was involved with his wife? Rodney. Oh, come off it, Grandfather. For once in your life, come off. You're forgetting your manners. Grandfather? Don't interfere, Norman. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you why I left. Because I was sick and tired of your hypocrisy, your lies, your, your deceit. Now, if you want to talk, that's fine. Let's talk. But no more masquerades. No more shell games. I don't think you're going to lose any sleep over my bourgeois manners or where I'm going to be living next. Not after what happened to Ann Howard. Oh, Grandfather, you don't want me. You want something from me. Like how much I know about what happened to her. Oh, don't tell me I'm wrong either, because I know I'm not. I don't have all the pieces yet, but, but I do know enough to know I've really got you sweating now. Let's talk alone. Do you mind, Norman? No, sir. I can use the bed. you, your little catharsis. Now you can allow me mine. You're right. I do want to talk to you about what happened to Anne. But that doesn't negate the fact that I was hurt when I found your note. Deeply hurt. And when I tell you now that I need you, that too is true. Oh, I don't doubt it for a minute. But let's do this, huh? Let's call a spade a spade. Now, you don't need me as a grandson. You need me as a source of information. I mean, let's face it, there aren't too many people you can interrogate about Ann Howard's death. Not without letting the whole world in on the fact that there's a possibility you might have caused it. You don't have to keep twisting a blade, Rodney. I wish I could. I really wish I could hurt you. It's about time somebody did. What makes you so certain? No one ever has. You're a bright young man, Rodney. But apparently you haven't learned that a thick skin is not a congenital condition. It's 
generally just scar tissue. Built up to cover a very deep wound. What do you want from me, Grandfather? Sympathy? Pity? Just... Just understanding. How do you expect me to have understanding for something that you won't even try to explain to me? I expect it because no matter how distasteful it may seem to you at the moment, you're my grandson. I expect it because no matter what you say, I have to believe it's there. I have no one else, Rodney. When you were accused of murder, I didn't ask you to defend yourself to me. I didn't demand explanations for your involvement. I don't think I'm out of line when I ask you to repay me in kind. I want you to believe that I never intended any harm to befall Anne. And that's not all? No. It isn't. I want you to help me find out what caused Anne's death. When Anne came to the house yesterday, was she emotionally upset? Did you see Mrs. Cord after that? Yes, when I was packing. I went downstairs and she was uh, coming in. When she came back from her walk around the grounds? No, she was coming from the street. The street? Are you positive? Yes, I saw her from my room. She was coming in the gate. Did she see you? Yes, uh, I couldn't avoid her. She, she tried to keep me from leaving. Did she say where she'd been? Yes, she said she had been walking in the garden. But you're positive she came through the gate from the street? Yes. Grandfather. There's something else. You know how... Uh, how well-dressed Mrs. Court always is? Well, she... She was very messed up at... It was like she'd been running. And when she came through the gate, she looked frightened. Thank you, Rodney. Thank you very much. Grandfather, what is it? Why all these questions about Mrs. Cord? Is there a reason she might have been on the bluff with Anne Howard? I won't answer that now, Rodney. In time, yes. In the meantime, trust me. And Rodney, don't discuss this with anyone else until we talk again. If Mrs. Cord is involved, I want to know about it. And if she is, and you don't tell me the truth this time, trust me. We're an emotional family, Rodney. But they'll always be a family. There'll always be bitter words and bitter moments. But the room you stormed on her will always be yours. You, Rodney, are my grandson. The chosen one. Yes. I've chosen you.